What's up, YouTube? Uh, Stay Medic One. Uh, I got a video for you guys today. Um, it's to go kind of in depth with um, into stropping uh, compounds and whatnot, and kind of give you a basic idea of what you're trying to do when you strop a knife. So um, I'm gonna get started here. Um, basically, let's see here. On with my strops, I have. Uh, there's two ways you can do it. If you um, if you keep up on your knives. Um, you shouldn't really have to go through, um, uh, you should just do maybe like a minor touch up as far as your sharpening goes and then head straight to your strops. Sometimes just straight into the strops and you'll maintain a sharp edge on it. Um, I have my personal strops. I have these, these beater ones right here, the one of the very first ones I've made. And um, I have two double sided strops as you can see here. Um, first would be the strop with the black on one side which is coarse the other side is white uh, the white compound which is like medium coarse and on this other one right here I have the fine green and a red which is kind of like a, a polish with no abrasives and it. it's kind of like the final the final touch there but usually I would just go ahead and um, I would go from the white and to the green and go over to the red just to maintain my blades. I don't let them go too far. Usually if I've got if I'm using a blade for work or a knife for work and the C you know, like a lot of my old EDCs or whatever kind of beaters. Uh, so what I ended up doing is uh, going ahead and just they would dull them out pretty quick. So I'd have to go through four stages of the stropping after a little bit of touch up sharpening to get it back to um, back to its sharpness. But if you're dealing with a uh, um, it all depends on the knife you're dealing with really. Um, as far as stropping, the actual motion of the stropping and all that stuff, um, well, I'll just go through basically. With the green, I have a uh, spider coat tenacious here, and there's a couple. There's a couple ways you can do it. I don't know if you can see this here. I'm gonna have to look over the video to make sure you guys can see this. Um, some folks will start at the base of the knife right here, and they will strop outwards, going like so, and then you'll do, you know. You know, usually a pass on each side, back and forth now. You can do two things. You can go ahead, if it's on the rougher side, you could add more pressure. You could add more pressure to it uh, if it really needs to, um, you know, to get the burrs and whatnot. And then lighten it up. If you put too much pressure on there, it will cause the edge to roll over because you're sinking so far into the strop. And the edge will roll a little bit and you'll sit there forever. Um, but... If you're getting, um, if you want to get, uh, just back to sharpness, just pretty much, I, I, you really got to kind of go through, get a feel for it, and, um, and kind of maybe do a cut test and then continue on, depending on what you do, uh, what you're doing there. Now, if it's, if it's severe, um, or you're kind of, it really needs to, then you can go through your black, your white, uh, the green, and then, you know, go through many compounds, but really, I find that just a, a white and green, or maybe black and green, is it, just fine with that. Uh, the other technique is to start with the tip first, and then lead out like so. And now the benefits of that is that you, when you when you go from the base out there, when you go out, you have a tendency to put pressure down as you're uh, at the finishing part of your stroke. So what ends up happening is this knife goes down. And you, you may, depending on how much pressure, roll the edge at the tip. If you start with the tip right here, there's no, uh, there's no chance to that. But it all depends on what's more comfortable for you. And basically just like that. And then you got it. And as far as the edge angle, um, the cool thing about stropping, uh, if you have a good strop with thick leather on it, it's a little bit more forgiving at what angle you go. Because the fuzzier it is, if your angle is... Um, is a little bit too relaxed, it, the fuzziness gets over under and you still hit the tip of the blade. Um, best to kind of stay on the lighter side um, and do more strokes as opposed to hitting it hard and then uh, risk um, doing your edge there. Um, so that's that um, as far as that goes. Another technique too, uh, because if you have larger knives, with a larger knife, doing that stropping technique, I mean you end up running out of strop pretty quick. Um, one thing that I found that helps me out is if I take my strop and I go ahead and 
anchor it down on top of something like so and then kind of you can kind of really you can control the angle or you can get the whole um, the whole blade surface there as you go through so that's another technique as far as the stropping goes on that that'll help you out there um, as far as um, applying um, applying the compound on here uh, basically some people will, will, will go ahead and they'll load this up a lot um, and they say it works out but it really all depends on what the leather is on top if it's not that fuzzy and you load it up you're just gonna have a whole bunch of compound up top and actually the fuzzy parts of the strop will actually get into the get into the scratches and the microscopic little burrs and actually kind of uh, roll and soften them out and get that fine edge. Now, if it's really fuzzy, then you could cake it because you'll still have a little bit of fuzziness to get in those um, get in those cracks. So, what you're trying to do when you strop is kind of eliminate any little microscopic uh, burrs that you have on the edge of the blade and kind of roll them over and smooth so there's no friction when you cut. Um, and so, if you think about it. If you're going to go ahead and, uh, let's say, if you're, uh, uh, it's kind of like if you're, if you're scrubbing, you know, scrubbing something that's coarse, if you have uh, something with, uh, you know, soft or little no bristles, you're not going to get in the grooves. If you got something that's a lot, that's real fuzzy, gets in there and gets it out. So that's kind of where that goes on that. Now, um, let's say if I was going to go ahead and go through, uh, let's say I'm going to go ahead and, and strop this and it's. After, let's say I go through the black and I go ahead and strop it, and I go maybe 15 to 20 times through there, I'll feel the edge. Before, before going into your next compound, this is pretty important, you're going to want to wipe this blade off and get any of the coarse compound that would be left behind on this edge off of there. That way it doesn't transfer over to this, uh, this leather surface because you'll cross-contaminate. So there's two ways of doing it. You can take a paper towel and run it across there little dangerous because if you're going quick and you do that, you'll fillet the crap out of your freaking finger, especially when you're shropping because that's the final part of there. That's what's, you know, you're going to, the icing on the cake as far as sharpening is stropping. So if you do that with a paper towel and you're a little quick, you'll go ahead and fillet the edge of your finger. So you can either take that and, and be careful and do it that. Um, I've got this like little rubber block deal and I just run the blade across it like that and then all the stuff stays behind on here. You know, rubber or a piece of wood. I kind of do the rubber because the wood's kind of you know, may add scratches to it, probably not, but I just use the rubber and run it through there and then the the, uh, the stropping compound gets left behind here and it, and very little of it transfers onto your next leather surface and you eliminate cross contaminations there. So <laughs> that there it goes as far as that goes. Now uh, you'll have to learn the knife and, and and learn your strop because you know different leathers that they use on strops I mean they're they're different some take compound really good some don't um, so you may have to do 20 passes on each side with one compound before moving to the next um, so but what I suggest is if you're really particular about sharpening um, get yourself two double-sided strops and that way you can run through four compounds so if you if you're the type of person that starts with you know, you do four stones and then you move into stropping and you're really particular and you go that extra mile because you want your knife to be just so damn sharp it's ridiculous. I mean, slicing farts in half. That, if you're like that, then you're going to want to get two double-sided strops that way you have four compounds that you can work with to get the ultimate edge there. Some people aren't that particular and it, it depends on how particular you are about your knives. I mean, you could run through two compounds and sharpen your knife and be able to cut paper. You want to do hair whittling, you're going to have to go ahead and go through four compounds. Or if you do want it hair whittling and only have two compounds, you're going to be sitting there stropping it for freaking, you know, 20 minutes with one compound and then 20 minutes with the other one to get that edge 100%. Uh, so, but as far as uh, going back to adding the compound on here, depending, if you have a, if the leather is not as coarse or doesn't have that much fuzzy stuff coming out, you're going to want to uh, uh, add it. Uh, add it so you, you'll be able to tell. You don't want it super smooth. I mean, you want it somewhat smooth, but you still want to have a little bit of fuzzy stuff in there because that's what's going to get in and clean out and help you with the with the edges on there. Some people may disagree. Some people like it super smooth. It, it all depends on the compound you use and this and that, different qualities. I'm not too particular on 
you know, I'm not sitting there hunting down listings for micron, you know, how many microns this, uh, you know, this compound has, this, can, this brand of compound, this brand of compound. I don't, you know, life's too short. I mean, you know, I just go ahead and I know when it's hair whittling sharp or when it's sharp enough for me and then I'm fine with it. I'm not going to sit there and go through it. Some people are particular and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, some people are way, 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 way into getting sharp, uh, sharp blades, I, you know, but for the normal user, um, you know, basically you're just going to want to go ahead and, and, and add it. Um, here, let me see. Just regular green compound. I just kind of, you know, run it through. I mean, you know, you can go in circles, whatever you want. You'll be able to tell when you're looking at this strop, uh, the compound in there. You shouldn't really have to add it all too often. It depends on how much you sharpen. Another thing that you can do too, I don't do it, but a lot of people do, is they'll go ahead and they'll put this, you know, they'll hit this, this drop up with a blow dryer and get it warm. Um, that way the compound actually melts and gets in there. Now, that's a good way to go ahead and get into the ba in, into the very, very core of the leather and still have that fuzzy stuff coming up and you can get that and then there's, I mean, when you spend the time to do that, then you won't be having to add compound as often because it's going to be saturated deep into the uh, to the base of the uh, the leather, and you'll always have that there. So there's another. I don't do that because basically, I just you know I don't have a dryer out here or anything. But it's not a bad technique at all, and I've heard some other YouTubers do that, and it seems to work well for them. Um, I, you know, if you think about it, it does make a lot of sense, and it and it, and it does work. So it it's all de it all depends on what you want to do, as far as that goes. Um, so, anyway, uh, as far as dropping compound goes, all right, if you're, if you're really particular about uh, the compounds or you really want to get into that, then you can go ahead to manufacturers, you know, Nice Supply websites or, you know, Bark River, this and that or whatever, and get the, and they have the complete micron description of the, you know, of how many microns per compound or whatever. Um, if it doesn't bother you too much and you still want to go with an option that will give you results and it's not going to kill you as far as shipping goes and how much compounds are. Um, if you go to Lowe's, Lowe's has a full array of compounds and they're about $2.80 per compound. All right, These are it right here. Um, right there. See that? One through five. Uh, basically, one is your black uh, one is the black, which is coarse, right? Then you have number uh, the number two, which is a blue, which is not a, which is still coarse and not as coarse. And number three, which these two are pretty much the same. Um, I imagine number three is not as coarse as number two. Um, uh, number four, uh, number four, which is your white. Right there, which is kind of your your uh, medium to fine coarseness, right there, and then your green, which is your you know very light abrasive, and your final touch up, um, touch up uh, compound there. Uh, like I said, for for uh, you know for just under three bucks, you can get yourself. A, here, let me show you something. This is what you get for under three bucks. See that? That's one inch in diameter. This is going to last you forever. This may outlast your strop. For sure, but like I said, it all depends. Cause some people will watch this video and be like, that, "Those compounds are crap," you know. Uh, you like I said, you can get particular and go ahead and buy the ones that are. I mean, these are made for polishing metal, um, knives, metal polishing, stropping. You know, it's it it's meant to do what we're doing here, stropping. Some people want to get maybe have more stuff, uh, compounds that are more specialized into the knife sharpening. If you're that particular. Go ahead and do it. You got the extra cash. I'm just giving you a cheap way out if you're starting off. Maybe this is a good way to learn. And then if you want to, you know, up the ante and maybe you feel like you want to get it super, super, super sharp or get, you know, like be able to drop hairs on it and cut it and this and that or whatever, you can still achieve that that goal with these. It'll take you. A, it'll take you a little bit longer. Maybe I'm not sure. I never bought any of the super high end compounds. Now, like I said, I'm going to microns and this and that or whatever. Um, they may help you. Um, if you got the money, cool. That's fine. So basically, like I said, um, I use two different straps, um, two double-sided straps, and that way I go through four, uh, four, uh, 
four different compounds, and that's always been really good for me. As far as, um, like I said, if you're going to go ahead, start with, um, I recommend just go through with the point of the knife, with the start with the point, bam. And just left and right. Don't need much pressure whatsoever, you know. If you do, if you go through, I mean, if you only have two compounds, and let's say you're rubbing black on one, we have black on one side and green on the other, or white on one side and green on the other, you could lean on with your initial compounds or your coarser compounds. You could actually put a little bit more pressure on there to help get rid of those microscopic burrs and the little rolls and whatnot. And then, but ultimately on the green, you really want to kind of, um, you really want to be light and let the compound do the work there. Um, uh, if you come in a more, if you have a tendency of coming more at a relaxed angle, you could add more pressure. If you're more at an extreme angle, you're going to lay off the pressure because, like I said, too much pressure will cause that edge to roll, and you'll still, you'll be chasing the edge. You'll be chasing the rolls, you know, and you'll actually, I mean, you could possibly dull the knife um, doing that. Highly light. I mean, you'd have to be leaning in on it like crazy, but just lightly back and forth. Like I said, on a larger, uh, on a larger knife, go ahead and clamp. The strop, I mean, this is, this right here, doing that right there, that is a pain in the butt because it being a larger knife and you're at such a long, awkward angle, the strop is going to want to dance on you. So if you can go ahead and clamp it to a solid surface and then pull the blade towards you as you're stropping it, you know, it, 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 it makes life a lot easier and you can do larger knives. Now, if you're doing, if you're strop, I mean, the strop, I mean, if your stropping surface is, let's say, six inches like this, it's going to be really hard, uh, or it's going to be a little bit more challenging to go ahead and strop a larger knife on that, because you're going to want to cover the whole blade, so you're going to have to, you know, you're going to, instead of being all gradual and coming like so on the strop, you're going to have to shoot across, that way you go ahead and get the whole entire, um, the whole entire edge there. So if you've got a larger knife, or let's say, if you've got, if you just got folders, or whatnot, you can go with a smaller strop, um, you know. Uh, get a little strop and, and then you're golden or you know or even uh, you know some places you know you can just get a block a little stropping block I mean I'll, let me, here I'll give you an example of that excuse me for a second I wasn't even thinking about this when I was going to set up for this video here you go perfect example there you go Green compound on one side, white on the other. You can set it on, set it on a surface, and just go ahead. Here's another one. This is just a single-sided one right there, and you could sit there and strop that. And that's just, it's perfect. I mean, this one, this right here is about four inches wide. I mean, here you go. Here's your tenacious. Look at that. I mean, that's pretty much perfect right there. I mean, you could sit there and don't have to worry about, you know, you get it perfect every time with that coming through. Bang. Bang, no problem. That might not be a bad option. Just to say, if you're just sitting on a, on a workbench, you can sit there and do that all day, and that's very, very easy to do right there. So, and you know, so I mean, that that may be another option for you. Uh, but yeah, just uh, just to give you, this is just basic dropping video, or whatever. I probably forgot a bunch of things. I don't like. I just go on the fly and write a bunch of points and this and that or whatever. This is not nothing fancy this is just Dave chilling here doing a video for you guys so um, you know I have I just made this four-sided strop for myself which has got the um, the black brown white and then green just simple I can sit there bang 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 go ahead and clean the compound out move to the next one move to the next one and boom and this is a uh, um, I mean this is eight inches of a uh, uh, of stropping surface on the leather or whatever. So there's you know there's I mean if you want to get fancy, uh, there you go. But I uh, but to tell you the truth, even though I made this for myself, I've hardly used it yet, and I've just always reverted back to my simple, the first ones that I ever made. Um, so there you go, guys. That's pretty much it as far as the stropping uh, my stropping video goes. If I missed anything, if you guys have any questions, I'll go ahead and post another video to try to answer that for you. But stropping's really uh, stropping is not really hard, um, and it is very beneficial to your blades. I mean, like I'm saying, uh, like I was saying, you can go ahead and if you maintain your blades, 
Um, if you go ahead and go through maybe like every week, you know, go through and let's say you're EDCing, you know, your EDCs for that week or for those two weeks every week, you just break it out on a Friday or Saturday, just go through and chill out on YouTube, watching videos and stropping, then the, the likelihood of you having to go ahead and go through, you know, the stones and then stropping uh, is almost next to you nil, know, depending on your workload. I mean, if you if you went ahead and cut some stuff, then of course, um, that's going to require you to um, to go to the stones. But as you get into stropping, you know how much wear is on the blade or how it, the cut performance through paper, whether or not it's going to require going to the stones or hitting straight to the strops there. Um, just the, the best is if you, the more you strop your knives, the less likely, um, they're going to last longer for you because the less you have to put your knife to the stone, um, the less wear on the metal or the less metal you're taking away from your blade and the, and the knife will last a lot longer. So just keep that in mind. So, I mean, if you're going through heavy use, you know, if you do it, if you come home from work every day and what, part of your routine is to sit down and, and, and do maintenance on your knives, you know, while you're watching TV or whatever, and then you freaking go, and that knife blade will last for, it will always be sharp. You'll never have to worry about it. I mean, you just, I mean, it'll just be super, super, you know, ridiculous sharp, you know. It'll be way ridiculous. See that? That's just freaking ridiculous right there. If you just take care of your knives. And that, I mean, that's just evil, evil, evil sharp there. Uh, so, there you go, guys. You know? So, there you go. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope I didn't forget anything, but I probably did. Um, like I said, if you guys have any questions or anything, any comments, post them below. Uh, if you, uh, you know, any questions about this. I'm still making strops. I'm actually got to make a couple here, fill a couple orders. So, um, if you want have any questions on the pricing on strops, just let me know. I can, I can make them any size you want. I mean, if you've got a special sharpening kit or a little box that you keep stuff on, you want to have one that fits in there perfect along with that so you can stay all compact. Uh, then let me know. I can do any. I can do anything. It's not that hard, dude. And uh, like I said, I'll take care of you guys as far as prices go. I'm not gonna go ahead and charge you 45 bucks. You know, 45 bucks for a strop, dude. You know, it's not gonna happen. You know, if you seen Vance Road strop, I did it. It's two and I think it's two and a half inches, uh, two and a half inches by 12 inches of actual stropping surface with a five inch handle makes it 17 inches there. Um, that strop all day, um, all day sent to your house for uh, 21 bucks shipped. You know, 21 bucks for a double-sided strop. Go ahead. I mean, I can go ahead and sell you stropping compounds, but just go and get them lows because you know, I it's just I'm gonna give you a little, you know, I'm gonna give you a little one and a half inch or two inch little sample cut off of what I have here because I want to keep my stuff here. You know, I don't get the lows all that often, and then I'm gonna have to, you know, what can I charge you? I mean, I feel bad for charging you for something there when you can go ahead and get the compound for. You know, you can go in there. I mean, I've got five compounds, so let's say if they're three bucks a piece, you know, you're spending 15 bucks and you've got compounds for the rest of your life. So, you know, do just do that. That would be your best deal. So, anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I uh, appreciate comments. New subscribers, dude, you rock. You rock for sure. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, uh, post them below, PM me, whatever, man. I'll help you. You know, we'll get it taken care of. Trust me. All right, guys, have a good one.